All right, so I wanted to talk about the Tesla Model Y. Uh, the event that announced the Model Y just a few weeks ago left us a little bit disappointed as people were a little bit underwhelmed uh, by the announcement of this event. Most people think that the Model Y looks a lot like the Model 3 and therefore it's pretty much uh, the same car. But not only that, Elon Musk actually downplayed the announcement quite a bit when he was like, and here's the Model Y. Like there was nothing really uh, special in his voice marketing the Model Y. So I think uh, I wanted to talk about that and explain some of that in the video, but I also wanted to talk about uh, why I believe the Model Y is actually way more advanced uh, than people uh, believe it to be. And I also think that the car was downplayed at the announcement because Tesla still needs to be able to sell the Model 3 uh, for the next year and a half to two years or even longer. I mean, and further out as well, but definitely the Model 3 is going to help drive sales over uh, this time period while they try to get Model Y ready for production. We've known about the Model Y for about six years now. Uh, they were teasing it about four years ago, and we've seen just two years ago some of like the silhouette type pictures. So obviously they've been working on this car for quite some time, maybe at least four years designing it. Uh, and like they come out with the, the exact same car. So no, like that's that's definitely not what happened. Tesla is a lot smarter than that. And they've probably taken a lot of the lessons learned from the Model 3 and applied them into the Model Y. And for those who don't know, the Model Y is going to be Tesla's SUV. It's actually a crossover because it's built on the same platform as the Model 3. Uh, however, Elon even calls it an SUV. And most people call uh, this crossover an SUV because it's it's higher up and it's a bigger car. So I won't talk too much about the Model Y factory in this video, but I believe it'll be significantly more advanced and streamlined using all of the lessons learned from the Model 3. And since 75% of the parts of the Model 3 are going to be the, uh, used again, they're going to be the same uh, in the Model Y, uh, then I think the ramp up should actually be much faster going from 0 to 5,000 cars per week. But let's talk about uh, the car itself and why I believe uh, the Tesla is sort of downplaying and maybe even hiding something uh, and this car is actually uh, better than it looked at the event. But first, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate your support. We've been making tech videos for about seven years now, if not longer. And so also please check out our other tech videos as well. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to touch on is the safety of the Model Y. So there's a perception that SUVs are safer because they're bigger and they're higher up and those are two things that would likely help in a crash and you don't want to be caught under a bigger car for example also like the laws of momentum are usually on your side if you if you weigh more uh, than the other car that you're getting into a, an accident with however the problem with SUVs generally is that SUVs are more prone uh, to roll over due to their higher center of gravity since they're taller however I think that the Model Y uh, as Elon even said in the presentation, is going to be uh, one of the safest, if not the safest, SUV in the world as uh, it's going to use like, a lot of the same safety uh, techniques that the Model 3 is using and also Tesla's Model S and X. So here's a picture of Tesla's Model X, which is uh, the more expensive uh, SUV or, or crossover. And basically, this is the test where they try to roll over the car and it isn't able to roll over. It just refuses to roll over simply because it has an extremely low center of gravity. It has a massive battery at the bottom of the car and that keeps the car upright. And that actually made the Model X the first SUV to get a perfect crash test rating. So I think they're going to apply uh, the same techniques to the Model Y. And they're basically designing it like this toy over here, like the, the roly poly toy, which is probably a toy you played with as a kid. And it's basically sort of an example or an analogy of how Tesla designs their cars. You basically, you can't knock this over because it has a low center of gravity. All the weight is in that bottom orange part you see over here. And if you try to knock it over, it keeps coming back upright. Even if you put it upside down, it'll just flip over and, and stay upright. So I think Tesla designs its cars like that. And that really helps to prevent uh, rollovers, making SUVs uh, much safer and actually taking advantage of uh, the, safe, the natural safety features of the SUV. And so the Model X weighs about 6,000 pounds. Of course, it depends on all the features you add, uh, but I think the Model Y will weigh around there as well, and that'll uh, create a very uh, safe car. Here's the frame of the Model Y. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more in detail about this later on in the video, but basically this frame is super strong, and besides the battery, it's actually giving the car excess weight that it doesn't actually need. Uh, and car experts sort of complain that Tesla could easily make their cars a lot lighter, but Tesla refuses to sacrifice safety for extending the range of the car, even though the car does have a pretty impressive range. 
So they definitely designed their cars with safety uh, in mind first, and there's also a bunch of other safety features for this car, uh, which I won't go into too much detail, but basically it has a lot of advantages over a typical gas car. Uh, but the purposes of this video is to uh, sort of compare it to the Model 3 and show how this is not the same car as the Model 3. Now because this is a bigger car than the Model 3, the only thing that's not safe about it is if you're in a different car on the road and you get into an accident with this specific car. So I think the Model Y is going to be extremely safe and you probably don't want to get into an accident with such a, a heavy and well-supported car if you're in a different type of car. I mean, let's take a look at this Nissan Sentra, which is the car that's on fire in the background. And this was some news from last week where the Nissan got into an accident with the Tesla, which is the car in the front here. And basically the Nissan uh, it burst into flames and the Tesla had like the Nissan's bumper went right through it and yet the car is completely intact even though uh, it sort of destroyed the back of the Tesla but the actual frame uh, held and didn't let anything through. Okay so now I think cargo space is going to be one of the most impressive features of the Model Y. Somehow they are able to fit all, over four times as much space into the Model Y compared to the Model 3, which was already a spacious car because electric cars don't have all of these extra components that gas cars do. Yet somehow the cars look pretty much identical, at least from the outside. Here we have the Model 3 on top and the Model Y on the bottom. And you'll see, like people are thinking that these are the same cars. However, the Model Y actually has 66 cubic feet of space, whereas the Model 3, which was the sedan, has only 15 cubic uh, feet of space. So how were, was Tesla actually able to fit uh, this much more space in the car without compromising some of the other features of the car which we'll talk about in a minute. The Model Y can also fit up to seven seats in the car. Uh, some people say that maybe the back two seats might be a little smaller, like you'll be able to put kids there, maybe not full-size adults, uh, but this is still a gigantic uh, SUV or crossover. This is even bigger than the gas car that I drive, which I think is, is gigantic. And I can fit pretty much anything in my car. I was able to fit like a bed and a couch, but this car can somehow fit more things in it. So let's look again at the Model 3 versus the Model Y, Model 3 on top, Model Y on the bottom. The Model Y still looks small from the outside, however the inside is huge. It's four times the size of the uh, cargo space of the Model 3. So obviously they had to make the car bigger. And you can see from the picture that the doors are bigger, uh, the roof is, is definitely taller than the Model 3. Yet they probably had to sacrifice the aerodynamics of the car because SUVs typically have much worse aerodynamics uh, than sedans. But somehow this isn't the case, and I think that's actually, this is by far the most impressive part of the car. Somehow they were they did not sacrifice any part of the aerodynamics of the car. So we're going to talk a, a little bit more deeply about that. So although people are saying that uh, the Model uh, Y is the same car as the Model 3, I think they greatly improved on the aerodynamics of the Model Y in order to sort of get it, get an SUV of that size to have uh, similar aerodynamic features as the Model 3. So it might not be that noticeable by the human eye if you just look at it, but it should have significantly better efficiency than any other SUV in the market. And Model Y does seem to have the lowest drag coefficient of any SUV uh, in the world. Of course, you can make uh, SUVs have lower drag coefficients, but they probably won't look like typical SUVs, and the Model Y uh, does look like an SUV. So let's look at some of Tesla's other cars, which are uh, definitely some of the... The record holders there are some there, there are definitely some other cars on the road uh, that have lower drag coefficients but all of tesla's cars are definitely near the uh, the top end of the the most uh, drag coefficient efficient cars on the road so the model x has a 0 0.25 drag coefficient i think they may have actually improved it to 0 0.24 uh, the same as the model s and the model 3 has a 0 0.23 drag coefficient and somehow the model y also has a 0 0.23 uh, coefficient and you have to keep in mind that the drag coefficient is purely based on the shape of the car and we saw in the previous uh, slides that the Model Y is definitely bigger it has way more cargo space four times as much cargo space as the Model 3 uh, so the shape obviously had to change yet somehow they have the same uh, drag coefficient okay so let's just have a quick look about what a drag coefficient actually is and what it represents so here I have two spheres uh, that I just put onto the screen and basically, uh, the drag coefficient of a sphere is 0 0.47. And that's true for both of these spheres. It doesn't matter on the size of the, the object. A cube, for example, is 1.05, and it doesn't matter what size the cube is, as long as it's a cube. 
So basically the size of the object makes no difference uh, to the coefficient. It's purely based uh, on the shape of the object. And for a complex shape uh, like a car, like a Model 3 or Model Y, you would have to take it into a wind tunnel and experimentally try to figure out what the uh, drag coefficient is. And sometimes these wind tunnels aren't perfect, like there is a little bit of an error and you might have a slightly different number uh, in a different wind tunnel and they have a specific way of testing these cars. But basically the coefficient, the drag coefficients that you're seeing here uh, that I've listed are some of the uh, best drag coefficients in the industry. Actually, I think uh, GM's EV1, the car that uh, they destroyed because they didn't want to produce electric cars and that's sort of how uh, Elon was inspired to build an electric car, that car actually had a a better drag coefficient than uh, these cars, but it looked uh, basically just like a like a straight line. So clearly that's very efficient, but it's not as practical as uh, the way these SUVs look today. Okay, now you might have a question about these two spheres that I've drawn, even though they have the same drag coefficient. Uh, your question is probably, well, the bigger sphere definitely has more drag. It's definitely uh, pushing or pulling a lot more air with it while it, it flows through the air. And you'd be correct. You also need to take into consideration the sort of cross-sectional area or the, the frontal area of the object that you're looking at. So if you can picture the sphere uh, moving towards you in, in three dimensions, uh, that's the area that you see is the area that you need to take into consideration uh, when figuring out the, the overall uh, drag of the, the vehicle. And there's other, there's other variables as well, uh, including the speed and, and the airflow and things like that. Uh, however, the area uh, definitely makes a big difference uh, on the equation of figuring out the drag force for a, a car. So basically what that means is although both of these cars, the Model 3 on the left and the Model Y on the right, have the same drag coefficient, the Model Y is clearly a bigger car and does have a larger frontal uh, surface area and therefore you have to multiply that area by the drag coefficient which ends up being a little bit larger uh, than the Model 3. Yet it's, it's still extremely impressive that they do have the same drag coefficient and I wanted to point out some of the uh, other features that this car has. People think it's identical but if you look at the front bumper uh, over here the Model 3 sort of dips into the car and the Model Y doesn't seem to have that. It looks like the air can flow uh, around it a little bit better. So it seems like Tesla definitely has made some improvements on this car in order to get the drag coefficient down to the same level as the sedan and still make it a, a much bigger car with more cargo space. So just to compare this with other cars, so it says here on Wikipedia, the average modern automobile achieves a drag coefficient of between 0.25 and 0.3. So that's uh, just like a regular sedan. SUVs, however, with their typically boxy shapes, they typically achieve a 0.35 to 0.45. So we're looking at the Model Y, uh, which is 0.23. And even the Model 3 was 0.23, which was lower than that range. But having a 0.23 drag coefficient for an SUV is now significantly below the typical range for SUVs given their sort of boxy look. So people think that the Model Y looks a lot like the Model 3 and they'd be correct, it does look like the Model 3, but the advantage that gives Tesla is that they have a much better drag coefficient and this car will be way more uh, efficient in terms of saving fuel and getting longer range. So it's pretty difficult to find uh, a car, even a sedan with a drag coefficient less than 0 0.25 and Tesla has done this with an SUV which is fairly unheard of and they really downplayed this in their presentation however it should give them a huge range advantage uh, when comparing it to other uh, SUVs especially when compared to other uh, electric vehicles as well. I think the Audi e-tron SUV was set to break uh, records by having the best drag coefficient in 0.28 but Tesla seems to be quite ahead uh, by some margin at 0.23, that might give Tesla like a 10% advantage here. And coupling that with the batteries, there's going to be a clear difference in range, uh, especially since we've seen a lot of the uh, competitor cars versus the Model 3 and how the Model 3 is about 20 to 30% better uh, in range per kilowatt hour. I also wanted to show one difference uh, between the Model Y and the Model 3, and that's the panoramic roof that the Model Y has. It might be a little bit hard to see in these pictures here, but on the left, uh, we have the Model 3 roof and you can see just behind the seats there's a bar sort of separates the panoramic roof uh, right in the middle and you so sort of get two different segments of glass. Well that's not true in the Model Y. The Model Y has a solid sheet of glass 
uh, across the top which gives a real panoramic look and it, in my opinion it looks a lot nicer than the Model 3's panoramic roof. So you could probably see that a little bit better uh, from these frame diagrams of the Model 3 on the left and the Model Y on the right. Uh, you can see right here on the Model 3 uh, that bar that I was talking about that goes right across the roof and that sort of prevents the glass from looking like one solid piece uh, across the top of the roof. And if you do that in the Model 3, you lose part of the, the structure. This bar here is definitely for part of the structure uh, and the rigidity of the car. However, for the Model Y, because uh, the, the trunk is a, a solid piece of metal, unlike the Model 3, uh, they're able to forego that bar that goes across and you get a much uh, sleeker roof, yet you still get all of the uh, strength and rigidity uh, of the frame of the car. So uh, the difference in design here allows for this new panoramic roof feature, which actually looks a lot nicer, uh, in my opinion, on the Model Y. And finally, you can even pause the screen and, and sort of look more closely uh, at these two cars. You can see uh, the different style of bumpers, and you can see that all of the uh, sort of the doors are completely different between the Model Y and the Model 3. Uh, the holes and, and where like the screws seem to go and things like that are in completely different locations. It looks like uh, they definitely put a lot of effort and made this uh, way more advanced uh, than the Model 3. So I'm sort of excited to see uh, what capabilities uh, this will have that we're not really uh, looking at yet or taking into consideration simply because uh, Tesla has been downplaying this car and they're probably gonna only tell us about some of these uh, efficiencies that, that the Model Y has when it actually goes into production. So hopefully uh, that was a good summary as to why I think that anyone who says uh, the cars are exactly the same and there's really no difference between the cars uh, it's just like an SUV uh, version of the Model 3 doesn't really know what they're talking about and Tesla clearly has a few tricks up their sleeve and they're being extremely humble about it right now. So I hope that video was helpful and informative. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button. We would really appreciate your support uh, and help in growing our channel. We're also looking forward to making more Tesla videos uh, for this channel, but please definitely check out our other tech videos. And again, we would really appreciate your support by subscribing. Thanks very much for watching.